The Sopranos are one of the most iconic families ever presented on television. Tony, the patriarch of the family, must balance his role in the mafia with his increasingly dysfunctional relationship with his wife Carmela, his two children Meadow and AJ, and worst of all, his toxic mother Livia. Oh, poor you! But the Soprano family extends far beyond the Soprano house. Many of the characters on the show are related to each other, and understanding how they all fit together can be a difficult task. So, I set about making a comprehensive visual to show how all the characters are connected. Now this took me way more time in Photoshop than it probably should have, but I wanted one clear tree for the whole Sopranos family, and this is how I was able to visualize it. These family trees will be available for download on my website, linked in the pinned comment. But since we're here, I thought I would go through and explain some of the more obscure family members and what we know about them. Before we get started, I want to give a shout out to two sources I used when making this book. One is the Sopranos Family History Book. This book not only gives a great breakdown of the family tree, it also has a lot of character backstory not found in the show itself. Interesting to note, the book was written by Alan Rucker, the same guy who did the Sopranos cookbook that I used in my Cooking with Kino video. However, the premise of the book is that it's written by some of the people in the Sopranos universe, and guess who one of those contributors is? Jeffrey Wernick, the guy from my Sopranos Lost Media video. I swear, the more and more I dig, the more I realize that there's this greater Sopranos universe out there just waiting to be discovered. The second source I want to shout out is Zubin Doshi. He created his own Sopranos family tree on his website, which you may have seen before. Though I wanted to create my own tree for this video, this was a great article to make sure I was on the right path. Alright, with that out of the way, let's get into the family tree. Now there are four main family lines. The Sopranos, the Polios, the Moltisanti Blundettos, and the DeAngelis lines. Let's start of course with the Sopranos. The tree begins here with Corrado Soprano Sr. The family goes back even further to Avellino with the ancestor that drove the mule cart off the road, but this is the oldest family member that we have a name for, so I'll start here. We don't know anything about the mother Mary Angela, but Corrado Sr. was a master stonemason, and he built the Italian church that Tony takes Meadow and AJ to. See that church? The great grandfather helped build that almost 80 years ago. He was a stonemason, the old man. Came over from Avellino with four dollars in his pocket. It's also possible that he worked with Gloria Trillo's grandfather, but we're never given a definitive answer or not on that. He had seven daughters. I can't remember. We then move on to their children. Corrado Jr., Ercole, and Johnny Boy Soprano. Jr. and Johnny we know all about. Ercole was developmentally disabled, and was sent away to an institution when he was young. He died there before the series began, but interestingly, he was named after Junior's grandfather, so that's another one I could have added to the tree. It was between me and your father in age. His name was Eccli. Actually, Ercole, Hercules, named after my grandfather. Junior and Ercole never had children, but of course Johnny Boy married Livia and had three kids. Janice, Tony, and Barbara. Janice would have one son, Harpo, later named Hal, with a French-Canadian man named Eugene. Now, we're never told a last name for him, so I left it blank. She would later marry Bobby Boccalieri, Junior's right-hand man, and have one daughter together, Domenica. Barbara would marry Tom Giglioni and have two kids, Tommy and Alyssa. They intentionally live far away in Brewster, so we only occasionally see them on the show. The only thing that we know about Tom is that he works in the special effects industry for the movies. But Tom just called from location. Apparently some smoke effect went awry and he inhaled noxious chemicals. Well, go, go. <laughs> we'll skip Tony for now and move back to Livia's family, the Polios. Now, I don't know if polio is a common Italian name, but the idea that Livia is named after a debilitating disease is very much in line with her character. Livia's parents were Faustino Polio, nicknamed Augie, and Teresa. 
We don't know much about Augie. He was apparently abusive to Livia, and the book goes into detail about how he was a socialist and their family was very poor. Livia mentions this on the show. My father came to this country with 17 cents in his pocket, and he never made a peep. They had three other daughters besides Livia. Satima is the sister that Livia was talking to when she pretended to have dementia in season one. The only thing that we know about her is that she's dead. I will never speak another word to you again, Satimia. Grandma, Aunt Satimia's dead. It's me, Meadow. Such a brute. Gemma is alive and lives in Tucson, Arizona. She was the aunt that Tony was sending Livia to live with in the episode Funhouse. There are two tickets. First class. Go to Tucson. Stay with Aunt Gemma. Take Aunt Quinn with you. They're the fuck a miserable. The final aunt is Quintina, also known as Quinn. We actually see her in Funhouse as she's arrested alongside Livia for the fake airline tickets. She would later marry Albert Blundetto. This is the Tony Uncle Al that Tony references in Rat Pack. Tony Uncle Johnny, that was for me. And Tony Uncle Al, that was for him. Together they would have one son, Tony Blundetto, also known as Tony B. The two Tonys were like brothers growing up together. Tony B would later marry Nancy and have three children. Kelly became a drug addict and ran away while Tony B was in prison. The twins, Jason and Justin, were fathered by smuggling Tony B's sperm out of prison to impregnate Nancy. They will probably go through their entire lives not knowing that their father's sperm was smuggled out of jail to get Nancy pregnant. The least I could do. Albert also had two siblings. Pat Blundetto, also known as Uncle Pat, owns the farm that Christopher and Tony B go to dig up bodies. He was allowed to retire from the mob after some sort of medical incident involving hiccups. Sounds funny, but it wasn't. He had the hiccups for like a year. Jeez. He would have one daughter, Louise, with an unknown wife. The other sister, Joanne, would marry into the Moltisanti family. Let's take a step back and look at them. Hollywood Dick Moltisanti married Lena DeAngelis, the sister of Hugh DeAngelis, Carmela's father. Together they would have one son, Dickie. Interestingly, the book says that Dickie's father was named Joseph, so either this is a retcon for the Many Saints of Newark, or Joseph is his middle name or something. Hollywood Dick also had a twin brother, Salvatore Moltisanti. However, it's possible that Sally was just a hallucination for Dickie, so he might not be real. Either way, Dickie would marry Joanne Blundetto and have one son, Christopher. Christopher was engaged to Adriana Laserva, a member of the Aprio family who we'll be talking about after this. But ultimately, Chris ended up marrying Kelly Lombardo and having one daughter, Caitlin Moltisanti. Finally, for this family, we had the DeAngelis line. The first generation is Orazio and Conchetta. They would have at least two children that we know about, Lena and Hugh. Hugh married Mary Pellegrino and had two daughters, Carmela and an unnamed sister. This sister is referenced a few times in the early seasons, but we're never given a name and she's never brought up again, so her status is unknown. You don't want to talk about it? Fine. No, okay. I, I gotta go pick up Carmel anyway. She's at her sister's. All right, so you can be fucked up with the empty nest syndrome and go, and go on well trend like your sister. If you don't want to accompany me, fine. Your sister can come up from Florida. Come on, she's not gonna do that. Carmela, of course, would then marry Tony Soprano and have two children, Meadow and AJ. Now, that's all for the family members that we know how they are related. However, there are a few relatives mentioned here that we aren't given an exact relationship for. For example, Brian Camerata. Carmela brings up the fact that he is her cousin, but we don't know if that's on her mother or her father's side. Also, in the episode Another Toothpick, they attend the funeral of Carmela's uncle, Febby. Again, unknown where he fits in. Uh, I'm sorry about your uncle. Well, actually, uh, Febby was Carmela's uncle. Finally, for Carmela's side, there's her uncle, Eddie. Tony brings him up during their fight in the episode Whitecaps. The only thing we know about him is that he was involved with the mob in some way. 
You knew my father. You grew up around Dickie Moltisanti and your Uncle Eddie. Where, where do you get off acting all surprised and miffed when there are women on the side? On the Moltisanti line, we have Christopher's cousin Gregory. He lives in LA and is engaged to Amy Safier in the episode D Girl. It's unclear who he's related to, so presumably either Hollywood Dick had more siblings or the connection goes back even further. Next, we move on to the Soprano relatives. Livia mentions a cousin, Keiki, but we're given no context into how they're related. My cousin Keiki, after he had his lobotomy, looked exactly like my son. There's also a cousin, Josephine. Livia says that she's going to give all of her jewelry to her as she doesn't have much money. I gave it all to your cousin, Josephine. What the fuck, the good jewelry? She always admired it. They don't have much money. Later, this same Josephine calls Tony and lets him know that their Aunt Conchetta died. They attend her funeral, and later the funeral for her husband, Uncle Zio. Presumably, Josephine is the daughter of Conchetta and Zio, since she was the one who called. The book gives her last name Polio, meaning she's on Livia's side of the family. Interestingly, Hugh's parents are named Zio and Conchetta, but this is likely not the same people. The DeAngelises aren't at the funeral, which they would have been if this was his parents. Likely, Zio is related to Livia's father, Augie, instead. There are also the girl cousins that Tony references when he complains about Junior's varsity athlete comments. When I was young, he told my girl cousins I would never be a varsity athlete, and frankly, that was a tremendous blow to my self-esteem. And when I was a kid, you told the girl cousins the same thing. It was very hurtful. We actually see this scene in The Many Saints of Newark, however, we aren't given names for the cousins. It's possible that one of these cousins is Cousin Josephine from before, but we just don't know. And finally, there's an unexpected member of the Greater Sopranos family, Patrick Parisi. In a deleted scene in Season 2, it's stated that Philly, and by extension his twin brother Patsy, are cousins with Tony on his mother's side. Junior's godson. Not only that, but Philly also happened to be Tony's cousin on his mother's side. Again, no context into where they fit into the tree, but that does mean that Patrick Parisi and Meadow are distantly related. This is Godfather Part 3 all over again. Anyway, that does it for the Soprano tree. However, there is another big family connected to the Jersey mob, the Aprile family. They play a big role in the early seasons, but over the course of the show, the family is slowly destroyed by the Sopranos in an almost Shakespearean way. So let's take a look and see how they all fit together. The eldest Aprile is Richard, also known as Richie, who returns in season 2 after being away in prison. He has one son, little Ricky, who's a dancer, much to his father's dismay. He almost married into the Sopranos family through Janice until she shot him for hitting her. Next up is Giacomo Aprile, known as Jackie Aprile Sr. He was acting boss of the DeMeo family until his untimely death from stomach cancer. He married Rosalie and had two children, Jackie Jr. and Kelly Aprile. Jackie Jr. dated Meadow Soprano for a while until she discovered he was cheating on her. He was later killed for shooting a maid guy, funny enough by Vito, who's actually his cousin. What are you doing here? I can't visit my cousin. Next up we have Liz La Serva, the mother of Adriana. We don't know anything about Adriana's father, but she's the niece of Richie and Jackie, meaning Liz is their sister. Oh, I don't know what I would do, Uncle Rich. I love him so much. He's gonna make it. Adriana was engaged to Christopher for a long time, before ultimately being killed for being an informant. Finally, we have an unnamed Aprile, who married an unnamed Spat of Four. They would have two children, Vito and Brian, who would later get brain damage from Mustang Sally, Bobby Bacala Sr.'s godson. Vito is a nephew to Richie Aprile. Call that uh, nephew of yours, uh, Vito, and the other one. They're in the building trades, aren't they? Funny enough, this makes him cousins to Adriana La Serva, which makes his statements about her flirting with him very strange. 
Again, I know he was faking interest in her to hide the fact that he was gay, but is incest really that much better? Finally, Vito married Marie and had two children, Vito Jr. and Francesca. Phil Leotardo is actually a second cousin to Marie, meaning he and his family are connected to this line as well. So he told you his uncle? Who? Phil. Phil's not his uncle. Him and I are second cousins. Anyway, that's the Sopranos family tree. I hope this video helped you understand the relationship between all the characters, and let me know if I forgot anyone or left them off the list. And, as always, stay tuned for more Sopranos content coming soon. Le Cousins Don Jeru. Obs Gracing Media, Daz J Kit, Sam Cedarland, Celery Man, Jenna Marie Johnson, Brad Smith Studios, Uncle Mike, Shane Boyce, Matt Joyce, and Countess Von Zarevich.